Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. Today I am reviewing a pen from Yookers, a Hong Kong based uh, company who make this pen. Um, obviously this is the cardboard sleeve the pen come, the box comes in. And uh, then we have the very nice box with Yookers written there. I, I'm assuming it's pronounced Yookers. Uh, I'm not really sure. Um, nice sort of steady cardboard. We open it up and we see the pen. Um, this is a, this is called the Metis uh, felt tip pen in the black grid finish. Um, so, felt tip pen. Um, I'll just show this now because it comes with a cartridge. Um, there. Um, felt tip pen that uses fountain pen ink, hence the cartridge. Um, mine also came with a couple of things. So I got a pack of six assorted uh, Yuka's cartridges, which has a range of inks, uh, felt tip pen or fountain pen, um, or felt pen or fountain pen. These are standard international ink cartridges, uh, and they fit in this pen. I also got a nice little pen sleeve here, which is made of sort of a faux leather with the Yuka's logo there on the front, and which the pen fits in uh, very nicely uh, and comfortably. Um, nice for taking it around. And the good thing about this pen is that obviously. It's not a fountain pen, um, but not every situation suits a fountain pen, and felt pen actually is a nice uh, option. So this is a Hong Kong-based company, um, and this is uh, it's a pen that's made of sort of a lacquered brass with this uh, black grid uh, texture on it, um, and then some sort of polished chrome and matte chrome or matte metal uh, finishing. Let's talk through the parts of the pen, uh, and then I'll show you a few things. So, um, plain sort of silver medallion there on the top, not quite centered, a bit strange. Uh, plain sort of, you know, springy clip, chrome finish, center band there on the cap that says Yookers. Um, I do like this material, this finish. I think, it, like, to me, it reminds me of, like, they were going for a vintage look, very clearly, like, 50s sort of-ish. To me, it looks like one of those, like, digital Casio metal watches and I think it's actually very cool. Um, then we get the barrel of the pen which is the same sort of thing. Step down to like this matte chrome end cap there and then a plain you know silver end there. Uh, it's a screw cap, actually the centre band is on the barrel not the cap, um, screw cap in about two and a half turns. Um, they're sort of smooth threads because it's plastic on plastic because there's a plastic liner here on the inside of the cap, plastic threads and we get this sort of slim slick metal um, section and then comes down to the felt tip on the end as you can see this one says 1.0 meaning it is a one millimeter nib uh, there are other options for the nibs and i was sent uh, three others so i got the 0 0.8 1.2 and 1.4 um, i'm going to talk a little bit about, about these uh, in a minute but these are what are available um, as it is fountain pen ink, so you can put a cartridge in here. Now I have a cartridge of Diamine Oxford Blue in here just because it's my favorite ink. And if you're gonna use a pen that can use fountain pen ink, why not use um, what you love? And I've been using this for weeks now, and you can see it's made very little like indent into the uh, ink. I've been using it for writing you know, um, shopping lists and to-do lists and things like that. Um, and Yes, so you, the threads are smooth, but you do feel them under your fingers as you do feel that sort of step down. And it is a narrow, slim section, and it can be a bit slippery, um, but it is okay. Like, I wouldn't probably use this for long writing sessions. It's also not a particularly big pen. It does post, um, and it posts securely, but is a little bit back-weighted, perhaps. Um, but it's a nice build construction. It's a, I think it's got a great look. Uh, and I think the functionality of using a fountain pen cartridge for a felt tip pen is very cool. And then of course, other pens that use fountain pen ink, Montevideo Engage, which is a rollerball. You've got the Jayoban pens. Lots of other pens uh, do use fountain pen ink. And there are ways of hacking things like even the Retro 51 to use fountain pen ink. Uh, but this is a pen, felt tip pen designed for that. Now, because it is a felt tip pen, there are concerns. How will the pen stand up to use? How will you clean all those sorts of things? Well, I can say the cleaning is very easy. 
Basically, you flush through the, I'll show you on a clean one. So these have all been used, as you'll see in the writing sample. Um, let's use the 1.2 here, because this is one that I gave my rough treatment to in doing this review. Okay, so um, you can see like there's a little bit of sort of staining on the tip there, just a tiny bit. Um, okay, basically using a bulb syringe, I flushed water through um, and until it ran basically dry. Then I soaked the tip in water for 15 minutes, which is what they suggest, uh, and then dried it. And then I wicked it on a piece of paper towel overnight just to get any of that moisture out of it. Um, and that's actually pretty good. Now this particular nib, I did give a little bit of abuse to, um, just using it a bit rougher. Nothing bad, I wasn't destroying it. I'd like to keep using it, but just to see how it would stand up to everyday use. And I think you can see it's stood up pretty well. Like there's no fraying on it. There's no, like it's a fiber tip more than a felt tip, I believe. Like I'm not exactly sure what the material is, but it's not like, yeah, it's not like a brushy sort of one that's gonna break apart too easily, um, which I'm really impressed with. Um, but you'll see the writing sample from uh, all of them. Um, unfortunately, this will be the one millimeter which I have on the pen will be in a different ink, but it gives you an idea. Um, let's talk uh, some uh, size comparisons very quickly. Um, I've just got two uh, pens here, um, and I've got a Retro 51 and a Lamy Safari. So you can see where it fits. It's, a sm it's not a huge pen, it's about the same size as a Retro 51, and in fact, if you uncap it, it's a touch shorter than a Retro 51. Um, and posted it sort of, if you put it alongside the Lamy Safari, which posts, you can see it's still, you know, like considerably shorter. The dimensions of the pen are as follows. So uh, capped, it is 129 millimeters. Uncapped, it's 119, which is just on on a usable length for me, just. Uh, just have like a decent length away from the edge of the, you know, the paper. Yeah, it's it's just usable. Posted, it's 159, but it is a little bit back heavy. The section is 8.5 millimeters, which is just a bit thin in my in my book. Um, for like, it's thicker than a lot of ballpoint pens and some felt point pens on the market. But uh, if you're used to like a more fountain pen size section, you will find this a little bit thin. The pen weighs 32 grams, 20 of which is in the body of the pen and 10 in or 12 in the cap. So when you do post it, you do feel that extra weight there on the back. But the balance when it's unposted is quite nice and the pen does feel nice in the hand. Um, let's do a writing sample and then uh, we will come back to it. So here I have some Clairefontaine paper. Now, another issue that people are concerned about with a pen like this is will it dry out? Um, one thing I have noticed is I left it, the longest I left it for was a week, uh, and it took like three letters to get writing. Now this has been uncapped a bit, waved around a bit. Is This has also not been used for four days now. Like I purposely left it um, so that we could see how it writes after a few days of not writing. Let's see how it goes. This is the yuccas. So yeah, first it's a little bit dry. Then after that we get sort of full saturation. In fact, you'll see in a minute what I'm gonna, what I'll be mentioning. Metis felt pen or felt tip pen. Uh, and this is the black grid. Oh dear, bad writing, I'm very sorry. Um, the ink in this is Diamine Oxford Blue, and I have in this the one millimeter tip. Obviously, things like flex and reverse writing that you'd normally do with a fountain pen aren't an issue here. Uh, wetness, I think it's pretty wet, like, like probably the ink as well and the paper, but you know, typical felt pen in that respect. More ink conservative, shall we say, than a fountain pen. Always keep that in mind. Okay, so um, what I've done here at the bottom of the page is I've written with each of the nibs, the 0.8, the 1.2, the 1.4, as this is just a black ink, um, and this is diamine oxide blue, so it is a different ink, but it gives you an idea. So this is the one, I'll say 1.0.
Okay, so one thing I will say is that they will spread over time a little bit. Um, but the difference between the 0.8 and the 1.4, like in this sample, like the, the difference is minimal between the pans. In my opinion, like the 1 or the 1.2 is probably going to be like the equivalent of, say, a, a medium to broad fountain pen at best. Like probably the 1.4 is closer to a lot of the broads we use. Um, so you're not going to get huge variation between the 0.8 and the 1.4. Um, over time, as I said, that will sort of open up a little bit. But in the time I've had it, this is what I have noticed. Um, let's talk some pros and cons. Um, cons. There is a slight tendency, um, I'll just get this back out, for it, the, the ink flow to change slightly. So you can see like it's quite dark at the top here where we're getting quite a lot of ink and then as we move down through the writing sample it gets lighter. We're putting less ink down because the tip is less saturated by that point. The flow is not always 100% consistent. As I said, drying out, not so much an issue. Like it, four days and it took half the letter Y to get writing again. And you know, any felt tip pen is gonna have a similar issue to that. Another issue is the, um, is the section. It is sl slim and it is metal, which is gonna upset a lot of people. Uh, and it can be a little bit slick, you know, like, and also like fingerprint magnet, like it just picks up everything. Um, another sort of issue, you know, like the price. MSRP is 55 American and the street price is 44 American. Now for a fountain pen, that is a pretty reasonable price, especially for something that's built as well as this is. Like the build quality on this is lovely. Um, you know, we're not talking like extraordinary, um, you know, sort of like manufacturing or anything like that, but it's well made, it's it's held up. Like this has been, you know, to the supermarket num number of times, you know, with shopping lists and things like that. It's been out and about, it's been in use and it's held up super, super well. Um, but for a felt tip pen, for those people who are used to buying, you know, sort of like felt tip pen from your standard stationery store, of course this is going to be more expensive. This is a reusable, refillable felt tip pen that uses a fountain pen ink cartridge. So it's a it's a slightly different beast. Um, one thing I don't like is the labeling being that sort of like large on the nib. I think on the tip there, I think there could have been a way to make it a little more subtle. Um, the big question a lot of people had, of course, was about wear and tear on the, on the tip. And as I said, I think it's rugged enough for everyday use for a period of time. I don't know if you can buy the, the tips separately. If you can, if they're replaceable, great. Uh, uh, you know, obviously that's not going to be the same cost as replacing the entire pen. But I don't think you're going to run into, unless you're like abusing it, I don't think you're going to run into too many issues too soon with these. Uh, as I said, I treated one a little bit rough. Uh, and it was fine. Um, and when I say rough, like I was writing hard on the page or I was writing on rougher surfaces and it didn't, it didn't damage. Like I could have taken it a lot harder, as I said, but I didn't want to purposefully damage it. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, pros for this, there's lots. It's ink efficient. Like it uses very little ink. You're still using a lovely fountain pen ink, but it's, you know, it's uh, pretty ink efficient. I think it's a really smooth writer. Like, Felt tip pens, obviously, like, you don't have metal on the surface, so, like, you, it's a different sort of smooth, but, like, it's not dry, it's not, like, dragging on the page at all. It's nice. It's really nice to write with. There are a variety of tips available, like, from 0.8 through to 1.4, um, it gives you a chance to choose something that is closer to what you want, uh, which is great, and they're cleanable. Like, as I said, I flushed it, I wicked it, and it's ready to go again. So you can change inks and it is suggested that you clean uh, them regularly. And of course, it is suggested that you avoid things like pigmented inks or shimmer inks because a felt tip pen is just not gonna let those things through. The big pro, it uses fountain pen ink. We love these inks uh, and any chance to write with them in any format for me is a win. I love ink. I love like Oxford Blue and I love Robert Oster Tranquility and all of this. And I can now get to use them in a pen that isn't just a fountain pen. It's a it's a felt tip pen and I can use them in rollerballs. So I get to now, you know, it's a, it's lovely to have the uh, the option of using those inks in a pen like this. 
So this was the Yuka's Metis felt tip pen in the black grid. There are a number of finishes available and at different price points and things. So check out the brand. A few retailers carry them. As I said, Goulet Pens in the US uh, carries them. So check them out. Um, I think it's a really interesting concept. I think it's working really well. I think they'll continue to develop it uh, and continue to develop different pens uh, in the line and all of that. Um, I don't think it's perfect. I think the section is a bit slim. It's a bit smooth um so perhaps they can come up with a few different i you know versions of that um but i love the finish of the pen i love the design of the pen and i love the fact that it uses fountain pen ink so for me those are all wins and uh i'm enjoying it so thanks for watching and uh please get in touch using any of the platforms listed below you can find me on instagram or twitter at the underscore offstage underscore me or you can contact me in any of my videos here or drop me an email which is listed down below uh, if you've got products you think i should be looking at or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review um, please get in touch because i would love to hear from you your support makes these videos and this channel possible in the meantime enjoy your pens enjoy writing and i'll talk to you soon